Hey everyone. So I just finished up. Hold on, let me grab it and show you. Chatting with the author, Kevin Watts of Dead Serious, My Life as a Funeral Director. And I'm sitting here and I figured, well, I might as well hop on for a quick little live chat. If I'm sitting here, I might as well. Um, I had told you, I got this box, you can see in the box down here of mugs um, from a local, not local, but it our, in our state, it's our um, one of the businesses that do a lot of printed material and, and things for everyone called the Hilton Group um, in the business. And they had sent me this box of old mugs that were created some humorous or thought to be humorous uh, mugs that were kind of industry mugs. Uh, and so I thought I would kind of unbox them and show you guys these different mugs. I actually haven't looked through all of them. Um, and so we'll pull them out. We'll see if they're funny or not and what you guys think of them. Hey guys, good morning, everyone. Um, I should have got warm coffee. That's very cool coffee. So here we go. Um, so this one might be one that you guys have seen lately. Being cremated is my last chance for a smoking hot body. I think this is a meme that's gone around quite a bit. So yes, no, funny, not funny. What do you guys think? <gasps> Royce and Andrew. I kind of need to like, hi, Royce and Andrew. Hi, guys. Ooh, they're so cute. I just, oh, they warm my heart. All right, let's see. Oh, here's another. Could we get some help here, please? We don't understand these price tags. And they're in a morgue and they're looking at the toe tags. The old people have wandered down to the basement, maybe. <laughs> it is a little humorous. I've seen, I have seen that one before too. What do you guys think? Funny, not funny. That one's kind of cute. So that one, yeah. So Hilton. The Patton Monument Group, um, Hilton Funeral Supply. So that's who these got sent over from. Oh, all right. Go for the next one. Oh, this one. Not funny. Not funny. I have the body of a 20-year-old in the back of my hearse. Not To me, that's not funny at all. So who agrees? Not funny. Not funny. Oh. Man, this is another. So will glass caskets be a success? Remains to be seen. <laughs> All the bad puns, you guys. <laughs> All the bad, bad puns that have not that have been around. Like these have been around for forever. All these jokes and stuff. Um, but yeah, this glass casket. So I checked one of those out at the national convention. And I've not done my little, I should do my two minute video on the see-through casket. I need to do that while I'm here in, in lockdown. Yeah, this one's, I know bad puns are kind of funny sometimes. Let's see. <laughs> I just like the, the, the drawing of the dude. Um, I've seen better looking bodies in a casket. It's not the best pickup line, let me tell you. <laughs> this poor little man, I don't know why he's like sweating. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see, although glass caskets were quite common in Germany, yeah, they, um, <laughs> dry love you, <laughs> JW. Um, oh. <laughs> um, well, this is just great. She was my life coach. <laughs> oh, I'd like to know who sits around and makes these up. That's the funny part that somebody would do that. Funny, not funny. What do you guys think? I have the Rocky. I have the body of a God, a God named Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> so some of these are fun. So I have a whole bunch of these. Yeah, two more here. 
Friends help friends move. Real friends help move bodies. I feel like there's a bunch of jokes about that. Like, yeah, I don't know, hide the about like hiding a body or something. And like your real friend would help me hide the body or, or something like that. That was a bad one. <laughs> oh, guys, one more. <laughs> Mind blown. According to mortuary science, there is a 99% chance that you won't live to see your own funeral. Think about that. <laughs> Who's the 1% who's living to see their own funeral? <laughs> That's crazy. Have you guys heard about that though? In all honesty and seriousness, it makes me think um, there is a thing that kind of started where people in hospice or, you know, people who knew that they were terminal started having living funerals where instead of waiting to gather all the people together and for people to share really great stories about them, they started doing it when the person was alive and so that they could experience the love and they could experience the stories, but they kind of talked in past tense about the person. So they got to experience what would have been happening at the funeral. And I know there's been some new stories and things about that. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Would you want to kind of attend your own funeral per se? Um, I don't know if what I think would be interesting, which you can't really ever do the study on this because you can't, I don't know, it wouldn't be real, but who would, who would actually come if you weren't there, like if you were dead and who would come when you were there? Because I think that's going to be a different mix of people. If they know that you are there still, you're going to get a lot more people that come just for the living person that's there that you're kind of reflecting on. But at the actual funeral, I think you're going to get a lot more people that come for support of the family. There's a statistic that like 75% of people or something like that, that come to a funeral don't actually know the deceased that it is, or like even at the visitation. So like coworkers of the children, um, friends of the children, kind of that extended family support that's going to come, but they never really knew the deceased. I mean, think about it. How many funerals have you attended or visitations that you've stopped into that you really didn't know the person who had died, that it was like a coworker's mom or somebody from church's mom or dad or a child of a high school friend, but you never really met the child. So think about that. How many funerals and visitations you've gone to when you really didn't know the person. Um, and I think that they would be more inclined to go if the person had died than if it was a living funeral for somebody. I think that might be different. Hey, Amber from Texas. Goodness, if this band would list eventually, I will hopefully be coming to Texas. Good morning from Chicago. I love Chicago. That's like one of my favorite places ever to go. Yeah, living funerals. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? Um, hey, Southern Patriots down in Alabama. Laxley, Alabama. In Pennsylvania. Oh, Dean, that's really cool. So Dean's uncle died in January and he planned his funeral even for a last meal with a family. Linda, so you attended a living funeral. Do you think the people there would have been different if the person had actually been dead? I think that would be interesting. It would be interesting. So yeah, mugs, guys. I'm going to have to just, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these mugs, but I'll have to figure something out to do. Um, so I literally have nothing planned for this video, but that, <laughs> but that, so throw some questions at me. I plan on just, this will be a shorter video, but let's get some good questions rolling about the funeral business. I still on Tuesday, I had posted my two minute and there was two people that were supposed to have contacted me to do a live video with me or to ask me questions live. One of them is L Porter. And I can't remember who the other one was. I'd have to go back and look. And I haven't heard from either of them. So I'll give it another couple days. And if I don't hear from them, I'll go to the next people on the list um, to do some videos with me. 
All right, Jeremy, you're in North Carolina starting with a transport company. What can I expect? Um, starting tonight, it's going to be a little different of a of a thing going on right now because you are potentially transporting people who have a virus that is highly contagious. So you're probably going to be wearing more PPE, more um things than you typically would. You may not encounter as much family as you typically would at nursing homes and such. So it's going to be definitely different now than it'll be three months from now. So just follow their lead. Make sure they're giving you PPE to be using. You're going to sanitize much more than you would have before. Hey, Trey. And so it's definitely going to be a different process than it would have been several months before or several months from now. Um, so just be very safe and make sure the shoes you wear, you don't wear them into your house. Um, so have different shoes that maybe you leave in a bag in the car, um, take off your clothing when you get home and make sure you don't expose your family to your clothing right now. Um, what is your opinion of the coronavirus affecting funerals. It's greatly affecting it. People are not able to memorialize their loved one the way they want to be memorialized. You can't gather anybody together. There's lack of support for the families losing people right now. It's sad because people are dying alone. The funerals are being held in isolation where families can't even have the whole family there at one time. They have to go in rotation or decide who gets to attend. So right now it's very sad for families. It's hard for funeral homes because we're the ones having to enforce the rules and tell people no. And it's really hard because by nature, we want to be caring for people. We want to hug people. We want to hold hands. We want to support. And we have to tell people no. Um, and it's really hard on both sides. And yes, we're running low on PPE, we're running low on equipment, we're running low on fluid at some places, and it is hard to get everything. Um, yay, Nathaniel, welcome. Oh, we had a, yes, you had an earthquake in Salt Lake City. Um, to graves and vaults, you know, a lot of that is going to be underground, so we're not going to know. Um, seals could have been broken in the vaults if they had a seal on them. Um, cracks, anything, just like the the concrete up top, you can see that it fractures. That could also be happening underground. But a lot of it, you're not going to see that because it's happening underground. Um, so you'll never truly know the damage that was maybe caused. My best friend is burying her father-in-law today in Detroit, and only three people can be at the cemetery. I'm heart sick, and I can't be there for her. Make sure you reach out, though, guys. I think I did a video with um, the grave woman a few days ago that's posted on her um, YouTube site. So make sure you jump over and check that video out because we talked about a lot of really good stuff that people could be doing right now for people who are losing someone. But make sure you're reaching out. Record a video on your phone, not just a text, but record yourself like telling that person you're sorry for them. They can hear the inflection. They can tell how you're feeling, shoot over a little video, post a video to their Facebook page rather than just writing, I'm sorry for your loss, send them a virtual something so they know that you're there, so they know that you love them. When they're having the funeral service, have your friend turn on her FaceTime with you so you can be right there with her and just standing with her. Mug fund. Oh, <laughs> Linda, that's so fun. Oh, when I was in England, was our funeral much different to America? I mean, the funeral itself is some, the same. I mean, you're still, you know, honoring the person and such, but there are a lot of differences. I posted a video, the seven differences that I saw between the two. So Dean, jump over to my channel and make sure you check that out. Um, I have had a couple of very small funerals at my cemetery, but I think they're planning having larger memorial services. Yeah, I'm hoping that all these people that say they're going to have memorial services later have something, that they have a gathering at their home this summer, that they have something later on. Because we see this with direct cremations where people choose direct cremation and not have anything at the time of death. And they say they're going to have something later and then they just never get around to it. 
So I'm hoping that people do feel compelled and do have things later to commemorate the life of who was lost during this time. Um, I think that that's really important. Trey, that's so amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. If you need any questions answered or anything, feel free to email me. I'm always here. I want to support our future of this business going into it. Jefferson Barracks here in St. Louis is not allowing anyone to be at the graveside, which is sad. Yeah, at a, like a national cemeteries, it is like the burial, the honor squads are not out and stuff at some of them. Like everything is starkly changed right now. And it's really sad across the board um, what we're having to do right now. Um, hey, Kate, baby. Thank you guys for jumping on and supporting. I think this is a great way. I feel like as people are maybe isolated, um, especially those who are single, no children, you're home kind of by yourself, like the internet is a great way to be able to connect with people and doing these coffee chats. So I'm throwing in a couple extras because it's a great way to connect to some other people, especially if you're having losses that you don't know how to handle or you're having friends that you want to support and you can't be there and things like we're talking about, this is a great way to get a little bit of support with each other and maybe connect with somebody you wouldn't already usually connect with. Thank you, Becky. I've had several funeral directors that have asked me what their requirements are currently due to COVID-19. And I'm like, we just provide the land and the open and closing the grave. That's And that's, you know, when they say like 10, only 10 people can be there, we do the burial my neighbor's leaf blowing out. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, we can do the burial and then the family has to move away so that the cemetery personnel can come up because we, we can't have everybody up there at the same time. So it's this rotation of people that we have to make sure everybody's separated enough. And the police are watching. They're watching funeral homes. They're watching to make sure we're not gathering too many people in one space. Um, you know, state boards are getting involved. There's a lot of things that we cannot get in trouble for. The families, sometimes we're getting pushback that they're saying, no, we're having this. And then the people just show up. Well, we're the ones that get in trouble. We're the ones that get fined. We're the ones that get licenses pulled and revoked and shut down because we've, we've done things we're not supposed to do. We have, um, there's funeral directors reporting that families are coming in and meeting and making arrangements. And then later we find out that the person had COVID-19 and the family had been exposed to him and they, they ex just exposed the whole staff. So then the funeral home gets quarantined. So there's just a lot of like bad choices happening that can create some bad situations for funeral homes right now. I'm an anesthetician and makeup artist. How can I get started doing the makeup? Any suggestions? Meg B, great question. Um, we get this a lot where cosmetologists want to get involved at the funeral home. Honestly, the best thing to do is to go in and talk to funeral directors, ask if there's a need, get in doing hair first, because a lot of times they do all the own makeup. It's not like doing a living person's makeup. It's very different. Um, you're not putting on the eyeshadow and contouring and stuff for a deceased because their eyes are not open like this. So you're not going to shadow and such the way you would um, if someone was upright and it, the light was hitting them differently and such. So um, you kind of have to learn a new way of doing makeup. And that means somebody's teaching you from within the funeral home. But if you get in doing hair at a place um, routinely, then they may allow you to transition into other areas of the funeral home. So all you can do is, you know, say, Hey, I would love to offer to come in and, and do somebody's hair for free. So you can see what I can do and then go from there because even doing hair on a deceased is going to be different. This is not a longevity thing. We don't need to make that hair so that it's good for, you know, a week. Um, like you would, if the person was maybe alive, um, you're working against gravity because the person's laying down, you don't do the very back of the hair. So, um, it's also learning to do hair in a different way than you typically would. So you're going to have to learn more skills once you get in and are doing it, um, especially if there's hair restoration, things like that. Um, so all you can do is honestly go talk to a bunch of funeral directors in your area and get your name out there um, and offer your services because there are people who, who want hairdressers 
um, that they can call when they need them. And so it's good to have. Okay. I'm going to do one more question. Um, thank you. Yeah, my daughters, they had so much fun making the dessert. They're trying to decide if they want to make something else. Um, of course, they think it's so fun to, you know, be in a video. I try and like to protect them and don't want them you know, um, they're, they're not YouTube people and I don't like using kids for the YouTube, but they think it is still fun, um, to do that. Can you hold a body till this pandemic passes and do the funeral? We can attempt to, yes, we could hold a deceased. Um, we only have so much space at all the funeral homes. So we, I don't, you know, it'll be, be up to the funeral home if they would charge to do that. I think a lot of the possibility here is that that's what people are doing though, is they're doing the burial, doing the cremation now, and then they'll go back to have the funeral later as a memorial service. Um, we could hold the deceased and see what their condition is when the time comes um, and hope for the best. Uh, but we don't know if this will be another month or two months. Um, we don't know when, you know, the lockdowns and the restrictions will pass at this point. We're hoping for another month, but um, you know, it could always be extended. So, um, <laughs> using to have my kids in videos more. Oh, you guys are so welcome. Um, I'm going to cut this one off now because I want to just keep it short, but we'll have another coffee chat next week. Um, don't forget my, the book. Ooh, where's the book? Um, dead serious. My life is a funeral director next week, the review of this book and the interview with the author I will have posted. I have a really fun video posting tomorrow. At least I think it's fun and I'm really loving the content of it. So I can't wait to see what you guys think about it. So um, just keep checking back. I'm trying to push as much content as I can for you guys. So that way you have more to look forward to here. As always, if you find education in a video, find something you like and think it's interesting, make sure you share. Make sure you share a video with somebody because Everybody needs some entertainment right now and wants to learn things. So share, share, share. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you don't subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Be safe.